Hello there. With just 100 days to go until the UK exits the European Union, politics goes into meltdown after Prime Minister's questions today. We have a tad over three months to go until the UK finally leaves the EU. So it was right that the final Prime Minister's questions of the year was dedicated to the subject of Brexit. And as expected, today's session has caused meltdown across the UK political spectrum. But the carnage was not because of the possibility of a no-deal Brexit, or because of the way the PM has delayed the so-called meaningful vote on her deal until the middle of next month, or that she refuses to discuss anything else but her deal. No, the whole system has gone into meltdown because Jeremy Corbyn might have called Theresa May a stupid woman. He was caught saying something on camera while seated at PMQs, but there was no sound available. However, some people are claiming he said stupid woman. His side has claimed that he actually said stupid people and was referring generally to those who would not take the Brexit debate seriously. All I can wonder is what would have happened if a female MP had called a male MP a stupid man. I expect the object of the insult would have been told to man up or something if he had complained. Anyway, back to the minor and secondary matter of the UK exiting from the EU. Theresa May managed to get through the final PMQs of the year by repetitively saying that the way to avoid all Brexit problems is to just vote for the only deal on the table, her deal. And now she can look forward to 17 days off before they get going again in the new year on the 7th of January. Then she only has to stall for another couple of weeks while she tries to get some meaningful movement out of the EU regarding the Irish backstop issue and then convince her MPs that the resulting assurances mean something before having a so-called meaningful vote on or about Friday the 18th of January and in all probability losing it. But while all this is going on, the EU has started its own no-deal Brexit planning, with proposals that UK trucks will be able to travel unhindered into the EU until the end of 2019, as long as we reciprocate. But as the vast majority of trucks that travel between the EU and UK are not UK registered, then it is an obvious offer for them to make. The EU is also starting to talk about no-deal arrangements over such things as air travel, citizens' rights, customs checks, banking, data protection, transport and for holidaymakers. Are we seeing a no-deal Brexit turning into a properly managed WTO exit arrangement? Are we seeing the EU waking up to the reality that a no-deal Brexit would be bad for them? Have we just seen the EU blink? Actually, it doesn't matter now. Both sides are now making plans for a no-deal Brexit, but they cannot do it in isolation. Once we get shot of Theresa May's objectionable deal, the EU and UK have a real opportunity to get round the table to get solutions agreed to the identified problems of this so-called no-deal scenario. When May's deal collapses, could that provide the opportune moment for a Brexiteer to take over the talks with the aim of both sides conducting a managed exit of the UK from the EU? That moment could see the birth of our new EU-UK relationship built on the day-to-day -day needs of things like travel and trade and not on the hidden agenda of creating an EU superstate. With proper nurturing, thought and engagement on both sides, this could then be built on to create a working trade agreement where the UK maintains its political independence and the sovereign right to run its own affairs. In fact, I can't see anything that would stop that happening naturally, except of course for the bitter and frustrated Ramonas trying to put as many spanners in as many works as they can in the next few months. Now, has anyone pointed out to you that according to Office for National Statistics figures out today, the annual rate of inflation fell from 2.4% in October to 2.3% in November? Has that figure been trumpeted from all the towers and hilltops across the land? Well, it would have been had it been the other way around, wouldn't it? 
Also, when taking homeowner occupier costs into account, inflation remained unchanged at 2.2%. This is just marginally above the government's 2% inflation target. So much for the scaremongering of rampant inflation, etc., and not a peep on the mainstream media as far as I can see. On a final note, there has been a lot of talk about this new charge of €7 Euros for a three-year pre-travel authorisation for UK citizens to get into the EU after Brexit. Now, I wonder how they'll get this to work across the Irish border and how they'll check that people there have paid it and also if they realise that it actually amounts to an EU initiative to create one-way friction, a disincentive to travel if you like, at the Irish border. Strange that there's been silence on this issue, isn't it? And I wonder if and how it will affect the Gibraltar-Spain border as well. Anyway, please let us all know what you think by leaving a comment below and thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video. And also, subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.